three, two, one. And three, two, one. So we're going to be resuming game here, guys. This is the beginning of the first regame here. JFA wasn't able to find any openings with his 2-1-1 into double eBay, third CC opening. Wasn't able to find any openings uh, against the style of Caleb. And um, as a result, really did struggle. It's interesting to see how different styles that people favor. I used to really favor this super fast double eBay into third CC. Um, oh, no, 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 no. Last time this Reaper did much better. He killed all of the Zerglings and delayed the base. But this time, not quite going to be able to do that. Um, I actually feel like, yeah, five minutes would have been an okay time to restart. But that's cool. He said three minutes. Apparently, he screwed something up here. Losing the Reaper really is not the end of the world. I mean, he's playing against a macro build. As long as he keeps up on everything at home, keeps up his marine production, gets his medevacs out on time, which I think he did pretty well in the first game. I think it's more about how he uses those units. Not overextending, not letting his medevacs take any damage. When your opponent goes for this, like, I'm going to build eight queens style or ten queens like Caleb does, you've got to just not walk into those queens at all, unless you've got enough units to kill them. You can poke around the edges, take a couple hits on your medevacs, but if you ever go into range, it's just like, bam, your medevacs get snapped and... I think the big point where JFA really um, floundered a little bit was once he got out his four medevacs, was pressuring with a lot more marines. He kind of just, just started losing medevacs, losing drops, losing liberators without doing damage. So I, I want to see him kind of change that up. I want to see his 2-2 much crisper. Um, now, with this style of 2-1-1, by the way, for you Terran guys, he's actually going to pause marine production a little bit uh, after... Um, setting up this drop. So you get 16 marines out with these two medevacs popping. You load up, you start your 1-1, you start your third CC, and there's like a couple of gaps in marine production because especially if you've scouted the double evo like he did in the previous game, and he's probably just going to play with that in mind this time around, you kind of know you're safe. There's no real aggression your opponent's going to do to you. So we see here those barracks actually pausing on that marine production. And You'll kind of pause, you'll start, you'll pause, you'll start. But there we go. Third CC is down, double upgrades are started. Now he'll start up constant marine production and start adding three barracks as he gets the money for it. But this is the important thing. He's still got to do well with this drop. He cannot let it get focused down. Four queens down here, actually five. But ooh, already getting some damage on a queen. This is nice. This is nice. Already forcing out the only transfuse that's available right now. Does scan one of the creep tumors. Oh, just barely out of range of that other creep tumor. That is unfortunate, but... I really think he's got to kind of fall back a little bit. Yeah, don't go too deep on this. You've seen there's plenty of Zerglings and Queens. So just be careful and try to lure those Zerglings off, off the edge. Poke in, kill a Creep Tumor, pull back. But he can't go too deep. So Jehefe here, definitely dancing on the edge of, of a dangerous area. Just needs to not throw these units away. There we go. Each time you do that, you kill some Zerglings for free. That's what you want to be doing. Use that APM, use that range, use that damage output and... Goes and actually gets one, two. He's even going to get, oh, gets one, two queens and and kills some more units. How about the macro back home? How is that doing? Instantly, extra barracks go down behind this. Combat shields is almost done. The armory is down much closer to on time this time. That two, two is going to start almost seamlessly. The next double drop loads up, even though it's only got nine marines in it because he did pause that marine production. This is awesome because all 14 of these marines are alive. He only lost two marines. He's killed some queens. He's killed some zerglings. And check out the economy of Zerg. He's down six workers. Remember, I noted last game that Caleb was playing this low economy, just mass queen, try to win every fight, teching style, where he just techs crazy hard off a really small economy. And as a result, if Terran ever overextends, Zerg runs away with the game. But if Terran doesn't overextend, doesn't throw his units away, Terran can end up in a really good position. Yeah, pull off creep. Don't go any deeper on creep. And just hang out here, and when the creep respreads, try to snipe it down again. That's all JFA has to do. Maybe rotate and snipe the fourth. These are all really good moves. But great counter move there from uh, from uh, uh, Arrakis, uh, Caleb Arrakis, of course. Does snipe that Overlord. It's only a 30-second uh, delay or 20 seconds in Legacy time, whereas it used to be a full minute in HOTS time uh, with the old creep spread. So thankfully, it's not as big as a delay as it used to be back in the old days. 2-2 starting up. Four barracks production is ready. So now it's really time for Jehefe to get his extra barracks down. He's actually building Hellions, which I find very bizarre. That's really interesting. Um, Hellbats are great if there's not enough Banelings. So maybe he's identifying that Caleb's playing this style where 
he actually won't have enough banelings to to deal with um the hellbats because of that oh great focus fire on one baneling but actually doesn't get the other baneling and uh not quite doing you know the damage he would like there but really is there pressure on jehefe to do damage right now not at all he's got to drop in the main if that goes into that mineral line there's nothing there go 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 oh the zerglings get here just in time but actually only engages with a few of them those marines still threatening on the north jehefe oh he's gonna dive on the queens the units aren't aren't there to support them right now but that's so many queens and so many transfusers that actually he's just gonna have to pull back it's not enough marines but in the main base 12 workers killed and saves every single marine jehefe is on fire this time and this is what i talked about Caleb, with this build, cannot take drone losses. If he takes drone losses, he, he's just almost instantly dead. We see that happening now with that 50 supply difference. Going up to seven barracks is Jehefe. Uh, starting Widow Mine production, those two Hellions, maybe a misclick actually, because he's just building Widow Mines now. And you can really see how Jehefe here just not throwing away any of these units. Being very happy to kill Creep Tumors, kill a few Zerglings or damage some Queens, and then just say, nope, nah, you've got too many units, pull back. Really the big change up here, and this is the big thing with this build, is knowing when to pull back. And I absolutely love seeing this. This is really cool to see him just change it up. The tempo shifts completely in his direction this time around. And Caleb here, oh, going to take damage from another drop. A few more drones going down. Damage he cannot afford right now. This this drop up here as well. Oh, he's got Widow Mines in here. I think he might actually be looking for a trade. 2-2 uh, two is finished, whereas only 1-2 is finished for the Zerg. Ooh, a couple of decent Widow Mine shots, but it's not going to be enough in the end. A couple of Medivacs actually falling. Caleb, you go, oh, Caleb with a good hold so far. But actually now with 5-4 Medivacs healing, these Marines with 2-2 two, two are going to beat those Queens. Those Queens cannot really damage 2-2 two, two Marines without their own attack upgrades. So these Queens only good for killing the Medivacs, but Zerglings come in to save the day. Jefe takes a good trade, but not enough to close it out in the end. Ooh, good focus fire there, but not enough to deal with the Zerglings. Does end up trading those Marines off as well. What is the transition? Ultra Cavern is so delayed because he's been so busy fighting. Caleb here at just 55 drones, not even being able to use his fourth base. Jehefe does not have a fourth command center yet. He's continuing to just pump out of seven barracks. But with those three extra tech labs up here, the Marauder production increases exponentially. 3-3 three, three on the way. Still just focusing on bio for the moment. As long as he keeps mackering behind this... And there we go, 4th CC. He's going to be in a great spot. There's no map control. It's all just Ling Bane with equal upgrades versus Marine Marauder Widow Mine. And as that Marauder count goes up and that Mine count goes up, there may be a window before Kindness Plating where Jehefe can just overwhelm everything. So that's going to be, uh, be pretty sick. I just realized I really should have noted when that drop happened. So as soon as this game finishes, I'm going to, I'm going to see if that's where Caleb wants to go to. When he lost 12 drones in the main. Oh! Scary trades here. Terran has a lot more though. Jehefe's got a lot more units right now. He can kind of afford these trades a little bit better. Oh, those marines a little bit too far forward though. Um, right now, this is such a hard area to reinforce. This is such a hard push to keep making work that I kind of wish... Jehefe, who you know, he knows he's got Caleb up against the wall. I wish he would just slide a drop in the main. Just to force Caleb to multitask. Um, and force him back a little bit. Right now, I feel like Jefe doesn't necessarily need to kill that fourth base. Just needs to keep trading and uh, keeping the pressure up. Ooh, these Marines actually getting quite surrounded there. Another big reinforce on the north side of the map. Oh, those Widow Mines actually managed to recharge and get some more shots off. They've got 19 kills and 3 kills, so 19 kills. This, this Winner Mine over here may be the deciding factor. Kindness Plating is just about 30 seconds from finishing right now. If Jehefe wants to do this before Ultras are out, yeah, he's got 30 seconds. That's it. Then those Ultras of Kindness Plating are out. Caleb needs to hang on. He needs to buy time. There is a Planetary going up behind this on the 4th for Jehefe, but there's no Liberators. There's still not that scary a Marauder count. He's only got about 10 Marauders in this fight. Uh, he's going to engage now. The Ling Bane actually trapped behind the Queens. It's trickling into this. And I think Jehefe might actually be able to force it if he can just bring the rest of his reinforce across. And oh, that drop I was talking about gets 12 drones more behind this, bringing it up to 28 workers killed. Drops there, and look at this, forcing Caleb to multitask and then hitting back in the front, abusing that uh, lack of attention there from the Zerg. The Ultra's trapped behind the Queens. And okay, this is scary now, though. Kindness plating has kicked in. This bio army needs to get out of there. Oh my god, those Queens just snapped a full hit point medevac in two volleys. The power of having eight Queens out... Damn. Damn. 
this is where Jehefe needs to keep it tight, and I really feel like because he didn't start Liberator production yet, things are going to be a bit harder than they needed to be. So if he does end up losing this game, I'm actually going to say um, that let's let's go to his vision as well, because I really like watching. Actually, let's watch from Caleb's vision. We've been watching from Jehefe's a lot. Because I really feel like it's his job to try and try and kill Caleb. But let's see how Caleb defends here. So I really feel like if he started building Liberators earlier, after about six or eight Medivacs, um, and already had two Liberators there, he probably could have just fought at that base and just overwhelmed everything. Because um, those Liberators are so damn powerful at dealing with it. Looks like Caleb here, just trying to do this back and forth. He still doesn't have a lot of Ultras, so even though his units are better uh, quality, he does not have the quantity. Terran definitely has that right now. Jefe's still got this huge supply lead, and he's going to try and take the fight is Caleb, but oh, he's completely out of energy on those queens. How often do you see a Terran win by actually exhausting the queen energy for transfuse? I think that might be Jehefe's plan. He's got a second starport finished, a fifth command center on the way. Um, he does have a fusion core, and Caleb here is just fighting for dear life. He's, he's managed to re-drone to 68 drones, but he really needs a fifth base, or he's going to run out of mineral patches, and great snipe from Jehefe. Caleb's struggling. Let's go back to the overall camera. Double drop. Double lib. Oh, this is it. This is the move. So, JF is saying, well, you can't really engage this army off creep. I can keep a big portion of your army stuck up here. Oh, oh, but Caleb might actually be coming with the infestor flank. He might actually come around and trap that. But what he's saying is, I'm just going to... Oh, he's going to actually do it this way as well. He's just going to snipe the tech. He's going to try and bait the units that go into the main into those liberator zones. Meanwhile, he's forcing the pressure at the top. He doesn't want to get caught up here. This is still his main army. He's still afraid of fighting here. And, oh, I think Caleb's going to take a pretty fantastic fight here. Land some sick fungals. But in the main base, he is struggling against that double drop. Jehefe, though, still trading. And uh, he's doing a damn good job of it. He's sniping down these queens with this marine marauder. Not that many marines. A lot more marauders. Marauders do struggle to deal with those queens. Jehefe, though, making it so awkward for Caleb. And that's going to give him the opportunity... Caleb just slightly out of position, loses the 5th base once more, and we are still looking at a maxed out Terran versus 155 supply Zerg. There are two Liberators on the map. Jehefe not really working on those flyer upgrades or the extra Liberator count during this. Um, he's just kind of really focusing on keeping up his micro and his control, and he's doing a pretty good job so far. But, ooh. Looks like uh, a lot of bio just uh, potentially went down on the top here. This medevac count is still good, but they themselves are getting bruised more and more as the game goes on. Uh, the marine marauder down here, as well as those liberators, are finally going to go down. I think it's time to pick up and get on out of there, but no, waits a little bit too long. Tries to stutter this out. Does end up going down, and Caleb here, just hanging on by the skin of his teeth. Let's check out that income tab. It looks like right now... Caleb is reasonably healthy on income, but now that half these mineral patches have run out on the third, the natural's almost mined out, the main is mined out, his mineral income is going to start to dip. Meanwhile, fifth command center fully saturated and established for Jehefe. Jehefe can float his main over to an island or something as well, start dropping mules on a different base, uh, maybe establish a sixth. That will keep his uh, income up. He's got three liberators at a time building as well as advanced ballistics. I think, uh, I think Jehefe is in a, a good position, but now that Corruptors are joining the fray, it's going to go to late game. I feel like he didn't need to let it go this late. Maybe, maybe he could have closed out, but that's just Gettysburg. It's a long rush distance. It's hard to finish it off. And now that it's gone to this point, he's going to face the same situation that he did last game, except he's going to be the one who has a massive gas bank. If he can secure another base, he might get a big mineral bank as well. And he's going to have ghosts out before Broodlords hit the field. Hell, there's not even a second Spire. There's no Flyer upgrades this time for the Zerg. So things are going to be a lot harder for him. But I don't know if this is the right fight just yet for Jehefe. He doesn't have the Ghosts in the in the main army yet. Yeah, he's got to stutter this out. Just going to try and blast down these Ultras without them ever actually landing. Nice EMP there. No more Fungal for you. And actually gets a few Infestors on the retreat. Caleb overstepping just a little bit. Oh, those Ghosts walking into their death. But actually, no, one of them survives. This is such a scary back and forth for both players. If either player overextends, you know, everything can get snapped very quickly. But for now, Terran is still up 20 army supply. I want to see him keep those drops up. He's got to keep this economy down. There we go. The drop going into the main base once again. All about the multi-prong and the potential harassment combined with the strength of the frontal push from Terran that makes them so strong. It's mobility and strength in the front uh, as well as as well as behind. Uh, looks like he's just going to keep going in and out. In and out. And um, 
This is a point where things have kind of stabilized and Caleb maybe just says, hey, if I took better fights from here, I would do it. So 18 minutes. Oh, comes in. He's going to try and snipe that base. He's got a few liberators set up here. Still only two liberators. Not a crazy amount. But snipes. Oh, man. Those snipes are brutal. And there's not a lot of fungal energy here. If he can land another EMP on these infestors, that's going to be huge. All right. Greatest Spire is on the way. So I've saved that 18 minute uh, timestamp there to try and see if, if the players will come back to that point at all where right around here where they're both maxed and if one player screws up and loses the fight I'm pretty sure they're going to want to go back and replay these max battles again and that would be cool just to replay the, the late game max battles a few times. Um, just play like a two or three minute max battle recover game, play a two or three minute max battle and, and see how that goes. Looks like, oh my gosh, Caleb's actually going to come in here. Oh, the Lings and Banes. Ghost's being caught out on the north side of this. And actually, uh, Jehefe, your Liberators are exposed, man. Your Liberators are facing the wrong direction. He's too, he's too slow to rotate here. The Fungals are landing. Caleb's done it with a huge flank. He's going to roll over this army. And Jehefe, with a moment of, uh, of inattention here, losing so much of many of his units, and the game turns around. So that I called it, guys. 18 minutes. That point where they're both maxed, I'm sure Jehefe is going to want to go back to that and, and not let his army get flanked because now there's freedom. Check it out. Caleb senses he's got a little bit of room to breathe. He's going to probably re-expand to these bases when he gets a chance. He's going to start range upgrades, burrow, building more ultras. No doubt he'll start his flyer upgrades soon as well as start making broodlords, but Jehefe is not done with the harassment yet. He still has a big bank. He can still re-max. It still is going to come down to a few more of these maxed out battles. Um... Four things get out of hand. That Liberator doing a very nice job there. Just denying some mining. Killing five workers. But the Queen's going to make quick work of that. It's going to needle him out of the sky. You know what they say. Keep everything away from the uh, the engine exhaust on those planes. You don't want to like throw a seagull in there or it will crash down. Looks like Corruptors and Ultras in very large numbers. But actually Caleb here is not going to Broodlords this time. He's really focusing on this like mid-game army. So... I kind of feel like the Ultras lose value as time goes on if you don't find that big fight in the open. Um, Jehefe, he's scanning this. Like, he sees it. He needs to recognize that's a massive Ultra Corrupt account and just chill for a little bit, wait till I'm maxed, and then take the right engages with good Lib Zones and good Ghost Snipes. Uh, you know, he can definitely make it happen. Jehefe, going to keep poking, poking and prodding. This drop, just going to be annoying. Going to get some scouting, but Caleb's hungry. Um, the big thing that's hurting him is his lack of creep spread now. He's got to respread this creep. He is starting to do it. We saw that his real strength is if he can just camp the watchtower with creep spread out there, he feels comfortable. The moment he loses that watchtower, things become a lot harder for him. But as long as he has that, he's usually pretty happy. It looks like these marauders are going to manage to outmicro that uh, ultralisk eventually. And ooh, these triple marauders. Oh my gosh, they might actually get the greatest spire. Zerglings are coming back now, but I think they're going to be a little bit too late to the party. That that greatest spire. Oh, he's not stimmed. He didn't stim again. Oh, the Zerglings are going to save it just barely in time. Poor Jehefe. Nice snipes go down. Two ghosts, uh, two infestors go down. Another infestor goes down. Caleb, got to watch out, buddy. He's got double Nidus going down in the main. He's getting his second spire. He's going up to that late game stage, but he's taking a lot more damage while getting there. Once again... Jehefe, up on that sixth base, he's got the extra mining. He's got the extra um, the extra income right now from all those mules, and he's got the bigger bank. It's all about the battle for this watchtower. Now, with the ranged liberators added in here, I think this is what Jehefe needed to take control of this map. But does he realize... Let's go into his camera. Does he realize that the double knight is worm in the main? He's not, he's not realizing he's so focused on the front. This was his undoing last game. No, no, he hasn't realized. Let's watch this moment of panic. Watch the moment of panic. Oh, god damn it. That is that is definitely what came out of his mouth just then. He's like, shh. Oh. And look at this. Oh, no, he loses position in the middle of the map. And he sent every single Liberator home. Oh, no. Oh, no. He sent every Liberator home. His ghosts don't have stim. They can't retreat here. He gets a good EMP, but he's got to get back. He cannot fight without those Liberators. Pulling every Liberator home, I think, is a big mistake here. I think that's a little bit too much to send home in this scenario. He needs something here to actually finish off the uh, the Nidus Worms as well. 
And then he needs a Viking or something to stop that vision. He needs to stop these Nidus from popping up. Looks like he's going to push forward super aggressively. No scan in front of his army. Going to cop a huge fungal. And I think once again, Jehefe has lost patience and walked into his death here. You cannot fight without Liberators against this army. Otherwise, those Ultralisks just will not go down. Uh, unfortunately uh, for Jehefe, you know, playing this game so much better. But Caleb, just a little bit too strong. Loses a few Infestors on the retreat. Jehefe still has a bank. But he's got to stop taking these bad trades. He's uh, down about a thousand resources lost right now. He's got to get these Liberators back to the main army. He's got to defend down here with something. But it uh, looks like finally a few Ghosts are going to come home. And they will be sniping that that guy. But oh no, Zerglings, man. you got to send more than two Ghosts. He's not splitting his army effectively right now. Ooh, nice snipes though on the front. That's where, well, that's where he's looking strong. Pushing that creep back. Does pull back for now. These ghosts... Oh, man. Losing a lot of production in the main. More Nidus Worms are popping up here in the uh, in the natural. What's he sending to deal with it? Nothing. He's not watching that minimap once again. He's really struggling with this. And, oh, no. Looks like these ghosts are going to clean up the Zerglings. But more and more Lings, Ultras, and Banelings are going to flood into that natural. Jeff, hey, you've got to protect this production. You've got to leave a squad of, of Marines and Marauders back here that can snipe these Nidus down as soon as they pop. Looks like he's going to send back all of his Ghosts, and once again, that really makes him, him very weak on the front. Um, it looks like it will get the job done for now. But, oh, can't lose that orbital. Drop a Mule. you got to repair that. Looks like the Nidus Worms really were the, the secret to uh, the success for Caleb, I think. Seems like the one thing where if Jehefe's attention gets pulled away from the front, then he just can't keep keep map control, he can't keep trading. And we see here, you know, he's still got so many ghosts sitting at home. He's got to split these units up, but he's struggling very hard right now. And this is stressful. I mean, it's such a hard position. When your opponent gets Broodlords especially as Terran, like, this is a nightmare. I don't think any Terran wants to play to this point. I really do think Jehefe is going to want to restart from earlier in the game and uh, and try to make things work from there against this uh, mass queen turtle of Caleb, looks like. And he's looking for it. He's got to make sure those libs are set up. So right now, there are a total of eight liberators and three vikings. He's going to need a lot more vikings to deal with this army. Uh, looks like uh, Caleb actually caught out in the open a little bit with an ultralisk and an infester. The ultra does get to safety, but the infester does go down. More command centers are going down behind. There's still only just two ghosts left in that main base. Uh, to stop any future Nidus Worms. And this army comp for Zerg is crazy. Five Ultras, 17 Corruptors, three Banelings, 10 Broodlords, four Infestors, and most importantly of all, 13 Queens. And they've even got plus one range attack, so they're going to be doing a bit more damage. Still no Flyer upgrades for Jehefe. Definitely going to mention that this game. Last game, I really thought it would be more focused around the early to mid game, so I didn't bring it up, but not getting Flyer upgrades this late in the game is really going to start to cost him. This time, Caleb's been up against the wall a bit more, so he's only got plus one, so at least they're kind of even in that regard. But this is where things get kind of awkward. I don't think he's got personal cloaking this game. He doesn't. He doesn't have the upgrade. Oh, does get a few snipes down on the retreat, but not as many as he would have liked there. Um, definitely would have liked to do a lot more damage uh, if he cloaked those ghosts and sniped down all the broodlords. Nidus Worm in the back going to pop out there. Ooh, nice drop here. Brings it up to actually only 41 drones left. And Caleb's low on money, keep in mind. Like 2k, 1k. Not super low, but if he if he loses a big fight, then he can't replenish, whereas Jehefe can. Jehefe, though, struggling to max out, struggling to keep his economy and production up. This time, at least he's got a planetary over here. And uh, that's the, the problem is that's his last mineral mining base. Um, he's got a few mineral patches down there, not mining very healthily, and they just continue to skirmish on the front. This is just like... This is so weird. Two What If Wednesdays in a in a row. We've just had people kind of like dancing back and forwards in late game and refusing to fight each other. So I'm, I'm very curious to see uh, what these players' opinions are. Because these have both been such long games, I think we will at most do one more regame of the, uh, the late game battle. And I'll be like, okay, you need to just, you know... <laughs> I, I just want to see what happens if JFA never loses the Watchtower... And, and, you know, pushes in and just keeps picking away with the ghosts and libs. More ghosts, more libs in production, but still nowhere near Max is Jeff in. 
Remember, Caleb lost all those drones? He hasn't replaced them. He's at 160 army supply. That is an insane, insane army right there. He's also got those 33 Zergs, these Ultras coming in. Ah, no repair! No repair! Jefe! Oh no! Caleb always pulling his attention away. Just kind of A moving an ultra, a few Ultralists from behind. You know, it's a very low APM move, and Jehefe really needs to split his focus to deal with it, but he's he's not doing it quick enough. So as a result, he keeps on taking this damage. Uh, does keep that other command center alive at least, but here we go. Once again, didn't leave any units in that main base. That select all army key, the bane of Terran players everywhere against Nidus Worms. Needed to leave a squad of Marines and Marauders in here. Even just like, you know, five, ten Marines, probably like ten Marines. If your opponent at least doesn't unload straight away, like you can, you can stim down these guys as they pop. Send back a few ghosts if need be, but... As it is, Caleb's able to just do so, so much damage with so few units. And if he can just clear up this last production in these depots, then that's that's got the value right there. And not going to be able to get that Ghost Academy before uh, Cloak does finish. Is going to... Oh, the third! No! The orbital goes down. No more mules for you. Uh, Liberator did kill a few drones there, but good spore placement from Caleb. And there's really just no pressure on Caleb at all. You know, those drops, those Liberators that kept getting queued up earlier in the game, they've dried up really hard. And... You know, Caleb here, it's not like he's mining a lot of money. In, in fact, his income sucks. Like, he's he's still behind in bank and behind in overall value. But as he takes these trades, I feel like it gets scarier and scarier. And it's time! He's going for it! Oh my god, he's going in with a huge Corruptor spread. The snipes are a little bit slow. He needed to snipe those Corruptors faster. Jehefe, a little bit late on the snipes. And his Liberators are going to go down. And now in come the Ultras and the Queens and the Zergings from behind. Yes, he loses the Corruptors, but he kills all the Liberators for it. And now is his moment. He's going to dive on top of this army. Those ghosts desperately cloaking. These Liberators trying to set up, but there's still Corruptors in the air. And Jehefe, unfortunately, just slightly too slow on the cloak. He's going to clean up these Lings and Banes, actually. Those ghosts just blast through them with those canister rifles. Um, but I don't know if it's going to be enough here. There's still a lot of Broodlords there. Oh, here comes the Marine Marauder. They're going to clear through the Broodlings fast. Good fungal growth, though. There's no energy for Snipe left. Looks like Jehefe going to try and take him down. Oh, oh man, oh man. I I think it's just a bit too much for Caleb. He's managed to do it. Finally, finally, choosing to engage on the front um, after this very, very slow late games. And he's done it. I think he's done it. Comes back after being on the back foot all game long. Those Corruptors actually stop mid-P. No, never cut it off mid-stream. Jeez. And unlike Ghostbusters, the rule is you always want to cross the streams. When you're a Corruptor and you're peeing on a planetary fortress, cross those streams for days. For days. Um, GG. Bad luck, man. That yeah. was a long couple of games. I think we're only going to have time for like one regame, but talk us through that game. I mean, where where do you think things went away? Were you Were you hoping to finish it? before that late game stage this time do you feel like uh what went on what are your um, thoughts man i'm a little salty about that one because i had it won but uh i ended up giving him way too good of an engagement and there was a point in the game where um he was stuck on four base and i had like five base going on six base all i had to do was keep denying that fifth base and he would have well essentially died but I gave him such a great engagement when I tried to take his fifth in the uh, little bottom right corner. I broke those rocks, and I was hoping to finish him off because I was uh, very far ahead at that point. You know, I had ranged liberators. I had my ghost army. He didn't have his brood lords yet. He just had straight Ling Bane Ultra Queen, and I just gave him such a great engage. He ended up. Uh, Killing basically my whole entire army there. I lived yeah. it off to a point where I wouldn't die, but it definitely gave him the edge back into his favor. Yeah. Like, I mean, that game went for so long and you did have such a big economy. I think there's there's always in these games, there's many points you can win, right? But I think you're absolutely correct in identifying that as one of the absolute key moments. And it was funny because just leading into that point, I was like, oh man, like, I was like, you know, Jehefe is in a great position He's been denying the bases. He's been keeping the pressure up. Like, like Caleb plays this kind of low drone style. So if he takes any drone losses, it really bones him. And like, you were just really good with your pressure. And then you slipped that one drop in, killed 12 drones. And he was like down 50 supply for the next few minutes. Like, and you were, you were keeping the pressure up so well. 
And being up 50 supply doesn't mean it's game over because it's Gettysburg, it's, it's ZVT, and especially with the style he's playing, which is very queen heavy. But um, it was right leading into that fight where I was like, you know what? You have let him max out. You're still ahead. He, he doesn't really have the room to get greatest buy. He's down on economy. But this is the point where if there's whoever loses is probably going to restart from the next few next minute or two. And then like a minute and a half later, he flanks around. All your liberators are facing the wrong direction. And that exact fight you pinpointed was the right one. So I think we'll go back to about 18 minutes. Um, 18 minutes 15, I think, is a good point. Um, because that's about a minute, minute 15 before that fight actually happened. Because I'm pretty sure that was 19 minutes to 19 minutes 30, somewhere around there. Um, and we don't have time to like necessarily play another 30 minutes from here. Um, I mean, I mean, we're not going to cut the game off, obviously, but you're already deep, deep in this game. So this will be the last regame. And after this, we'll do a bit of Q&A with chat. For, so for the guys watching in chat, start shouting out your questions. Use the at x5 underscore pig tag whether they're for Caleb or for Jehefe um, or just for all of us to discuss. Um, obviously, we haven't had Caleb on the call, but we'll get him on after this uh, regame and then we'll all kind of discuss the matchup. So we do have um, another minute or two while it recovers because it's recovering 19 or 18 minutes into the game. Yeah, so I did yeah, want to yeah. ask you, with the Nidus Worms, um, so obviously that's later on, you know, you probably could dictate the pace earlier than that. Do you feel like it's worth it what, what do you think is the best way to shut this down? Do you think leaving a Viking, leaving a little squad of Marine Marauder on a separate like hotkey or de-hotkeyed from your army? Because I felt like you did struggle a lot. Like the first time you kind of panicked yeah. and sent all your Liberators back and then your main army was like caught in the open. Um, what, what do you think is like the best response? I know it kind of depends what pops out of the Nidus, but do you think just a squad of Marine Marauder to like kill the Nidus as soon as it pops is good? Well, certainly the Polish Nidus was strong tonight. And... Um... <laughs> I feel that you can't really use bio, except for Ghost, to really deal with it. Sometimes I was using my whole bio army, which was a very bad idea. Yep. I think there was even one point where I sent back all my liberators, and that was an even worse idea. Um, but those moments are the most hectic, the most important. Yeah. Um, because if I make a mistake at by not looking at my main army, he can just go in and kill me. But if I don't exactly. look at my base, I lose everything there. And yep. it's not, and like, the Nidus is very hard to deny, but the biggest thing I would probably say is just getting a Viking out uh, instinctually in the late game and just saying, hey, I need to make sure there aren't uh, overlords in these locations. And it's not That's, like it it's not like it stops it, right? But it gives you a warning as well. Like you see an overlord coming in and yeah, you're kind I, of aware. I can send like eight yeah. marauders there and two shot the Nidus. Yeah. So that's that's awesome. I like that as well. Like so, it's it's kind of hard, right? Because you're so focused on this map, especially. You need to hold the high ground above your fifth up there, and you need to try and hold the watchtower. But if you're ever just on the edge of, of their vision, you're both there dancing, and you do look away for a good eight seconds or so to deselect some units, put them down there you might just get fungled and die. So, so you kind of want to pull your whole army back a bit so you've got a bit more breathing room and deselect the units, but it's still so hard to do in the heat of battle and to not screw it up and get fungled or something like that. So uh, obviously that was like a more minor thing later in the game that, that ended up being bigger um, as the game went on. But for now, we are going to be restarting a bit earlier in the game when you've been you know, denying those bases. Uh, but he has caught up. He is maxed out as well. You're both maxed. And uh, good luck, have fun, man. Let's see what you can do different. All right, thank you. Kick some ass, man. I hope so. <laughs> All right. Both maxed. Ready. Let's see if these boys are ready. I think they are good to go. Caleb says, go, go. Let's do this. Leroy. Jenkins. 